Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and use ACP Workbench step by steps. Before you make your purchase, you will need to know the following things. First, ACP Workbench is a Windows software. Second, uh, each activation keys can only be used once in a single computer. Third, the current support products are up to stream series except for the uh, AMP sub. It also supports S10 and SA100. So let's start now. Once you make the purchase from a web store, you will receive an email which contains a download link and the activation keys. You can copy the download the link, open your browser, then click enter. Now click download, and then you just wait till it's finished. Okay, when it's done, you get a zip file. You want to unzip it, extract the files to a place that you know. Then open up and you see the workbench setup. Double click on it to start the installation. Let's click next. Select where you want to install it. Then next again. Click next again. And then just wait till it's finished. Now it's done. Click close. Once you install, you'll see the ACP branch icon here. Double click to open it up. I've already installed it before, so it didn't prompt me to uh, enter the activation key. But when you first time install, it will first prompt for you to enter the key. Copy the key from the email, put it in there, and then click on the wait till it uh, finished the setup. It will take uh, some time, and then you will see this screen when it's finished. Once you finish install the software, now we can start to connect the device to our PC. Before that, in this software, on the bottom left corner, you can see a USB disconnected right now. And on the audio effect is an empty page. This just indicates that there's nothing connected to the PC yet. First, you want to power up your device and connect the speaker. And we'll use a micro USB cable to connect the device with the PC. Remember to use a cable that can transfer data. If you use the one that only uh, able to charge the phone, it won't transfer any data and the PC could not find the device. Connect the micro USB to the board. And then connect this end to the PC. You'll notice that the light has turned yellow. This is in the newest firmware. We said that when you connect to a PC, it will turn in yellow. In previous uh, firmware, it will be red. We change it to yellow because we want to separate from the USB storage at the back because this also will turn the LED to red when we connect the USB storage. Once everyone's connected, you can see here now, uh, it shows that it's connected to a up to stream USB audio. And on the audio effect page, you have all the different settings that you can change for your device. Once everything is connected, we can now try to tweak our board. Before we do that, you want to some play some music first. You can either use your mobile phone to use the full stream ADP or we can use directly use the PC. You can change the speaker output to up to stream USB audio. And now the PC will output the sound 
through the cable to our device. You can play a song. Okay. Now we're playing. In the first step, you have a main EQ here. See a little power button here. You click it. You turn blue, which is activate now. Then you can pull this gain to change the gain of the device. You can also click this arrow to do the EQ style settings. Here in the EQ list, you can see different preset ones. Uh, no. Like this classic, vocal boost, fret, bass boost. Okay. You can hear different uh, the sound. The sound output is actually when we change this, it is uh, changed in real time. In this software, everything we changes will be changing in real time. So you can listen and try to see which one fit your best. Except for this preset one, you can also add your own. We have nine filters here. You can, oh, 10 filters here. You can add more. And then see you can see, you can pull it and directly hear the difference. Just change to the curve that you like. And then you can do save or save as. You can do save as now. Save as the difference is save as lets you input your own name. I'll name it just one. Okay. And then you can see in the list a new EQ is saved here. So next time, if you want to change to another board, you can just directly select the, the preset one by yourself. Okay. Next, we have a couple different settings. But this one is a 3D plus. It will give a sound a little bit of 3D effects. Virtual one. You can click this to change the percentage or you can directly type it in to change it. Second one is the bass. And here is a lot heavier bass now. You can even increase it. Or you can decrease it. Yeah, you can directly hear the difference. Let me turn it off. Stereo written. Let's go for written part. You want the shaping on or off? And you can see the difference to fit the sound, uh, the song. Harmonic exciter. It's like how dry or wet your sound can be. Also, you can see the difference by changing the settings. Here's the DLC. Turn it on and then you want the more settings. So we click on this arrow. In here, you can change the DLC mode. Default is full band. Or you can change the other two band with different settings here. You can also change the pre-gain, share hole, ratio, attack time, and release time. Let me turn this down a bit. For the show, you can also directly pull this DB to change to the one that you're satisfied. Once you finish, just turn it off and it stays there. So last couple items is uh, left channel EQ, right channel EQ. This two is mainly for you to change the EQ for left channel or right channel separately. The main EQ change it at the same time, but if you want different pre-gain for the different uh, channels, you can change it here. If maybe if you want a lower volume on the left channel, you can, you can change it here. And then you can also change the right channel higher. It really depends on what you want. You can also set the EQ, same as the main EQ there, to have, they have both have uh, different EQs. 
The next item is a mono channel. The mono channel is mainly for the mono board. So uh, if let me see this, turn this off first. So if you use our mono board, then you can use this option to change the gain for this board. Right now you can see that it doesn't affect, affect our stereo board. Okay, everything is the same. You just use the, your preset EQs to change for this. The disc couple uh, one, two, three, four, five items is to change the source pre -gain. We have line in, USB, Bluetooth, Speedif, or I2S. Uh, I'm connected to PC now, so I'm using USB. So just click on USB. And then you can change the pre-gain. The volume, actually, it's not pre-gain, volume. The lower love. This is lets you to do different volume level for your different source. Now underneath, we have different uh, settings for uh, the pins. The first one is uh, output mode. You can change st to stereo output or mono output. The following the GPROs, keys and TX in the list, you can change the function to different function. By default, the GPL is a C key A, but you can change it to a USB LED light or use it as an optical LED light. Or at the end here, you can see out critical. This one is actually can act as a trigger, as an output trigger to our device. Different one has a similar list. Except for the speed diff. Speed diff, you can see uh, this board by default is speed diff in, and we also have a speed diff out. This is because by default, our uh, up the stream mini and pro by default the speed diff pin is set as a speed diff uh, output but for all our amplifier boards by default is set is uh, as a speed diff input but if you want to switch around it you can change it here if you set this set it to speed diff out then now the speed diff pin will add as a speed diff output so you will need to connect our speed diff output expansion board instead of using the speed diff input board so once you have changed all the settings you like, remember to save the files to the device. Or else, if you unplug the power, all the changes will be lost. To save the file, you go to the downloader here and click on the Save Configurations to Fresh. And then just click OK, and then it will save the settings. Also here, you can see the firmware upgrade. This is only used for uh, when you try to install a firmware, you can also use these tools to install it. But we recommend you to first use the OTA update from the mobile phone first. If it fails, then you can ask us for firmware and you can install the files here to your device. There's another option I want to mention in the file. There is a import audio settings and export audio settings. This is very useful if you want to have the same setting for a couple different, uh, same, but well, not different, same board. For example, if you have a free amp uh, V4, then you can use, you can, well, if you change once, you can export the settings, give it a name, Let's say F1, save it. It will save all the changes you made. And then you unplug this board and plug in a new one. Just go import, select the file, and then all the settings will be loaded on the new board. And then you just need to save to the fresh and then it's done. One more thing you need to mention here is the buttons on the bottom right corner. You can still refresh, uh, reset, and virtual reset. These buttons are useful when you have done some mistake in your settings. The difference is like this. Virtual reset uh, will refresh all the settings to the factory default. So it will erase everything, you changes, 
even if you save it, it will go back to the default settings. Reset, do the uh, same thing. It will reset all the current setting, but it will refresh up to the point that you last saved. So if you click save like, like we did before, we just save it. And then uh, let's say we do a little changes here. And then, oh, I don't want it, but I want, I forgot where I put before. So I can just go reset. And then you click refresh, refresh once. And then you can see it turns to the point where we last saved. As you can see, ACP Webbench is not only a useful tool to change your music EQs and different effects, but it is also a useful tool to change the configuration of our device. If you like this video and think it's helpful and you want to use this software, I'll put down a link below for you to purchase. Thank you very much for watching and let us see you next time. If you like this channel, please press the subscribe button. And don't forget to press that little bell to receive notice when we release our new videos. Thank you.